So what I have attached to my brake caliper at this point in time is a brake bleeding tool. Um, you can buy these tools for about 10 bucks at AutoZone or Canadian Tire or Princess Auto or pretty much anywhere that sells things to fix cars with. And what you want to do is create a tight seal around this bleeder nipple here, uh, which will feed into a tube that goes into a little container to store the spent brake fluid. And then for those that are wondering what this little extension for, uh, it's to keep this tube submerged in brake fluid so that every time you release the brake pedal that it's drawing in fluid, um, keeping this, I guess, fluid line solid uh, so it doesn't let any air into the braking system. Um, since air is compressible, it is really bad to have any of it in your brake system. Uh, big no-no. A lot of brake failures are caused by air in the system or brakes that are not bled properly. Um, in my particular case, uh, I had mentioned earlier in my video that we're going to do a brake fluid flush. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fresh batch of brake fluid. I'm going to run it through my master cylinder filler hole, which is located right up here beside the air cleaner. And I'm going to just keep pushing through clean fluid until the fluid coming out of that tube is the same color as the new fluid that I'm installing in the vehicle. Um, I'm not going to show how to do all four wheels. I'm basically going to show you how to do one of the fronts, um, basically to service the other side, um, is going to be exactly the same. And then to do the brake bleed on the rears, um, again, will be, will be symmetrical on the rear end of the vehicle. So using a 10 millimeter uh, open end wrench, you just want to loosen this brake bleeder valve uh, enough, maybe about three quarters of a turn. Um, and you can sort of see brake fluid is beginning to flow already even though no one's stepping on anything. So what I'm going to do is basically screw this on tightly and I'm just going to pump the brake pedal and keep pumping it and emptying this container out until the brake fluid I find in this container is as clear as the new fluid that I'm putting in. And basically what we're trying to do is just get rid of all the old fluid in the master cylinder reservoir through one of the calipers. In this case it's the front passenger side. It doesn't really matter where you start off with. I like the front because the circuits are shorter as far as fluid path goes um, to get all the junk out first and then from there um, you know once the fluid is clean then you do sort of the same repeat process for the remaining of the three wheels on the vehicle. So prior to the start of the bleeding process I want to make sure that this master fluid, brake master fluid reservoir is actually in fact full. Uh, full full uh, and I'm not going to put the cap back on during the bleeding process because really you're just pushing fluid through the the reservoir and through the cylinder bores. And uh, on the filler cap it says to use a high quality DOT3 approved brake fluid. Uh, in my particular case, um, this is the brake fluid that I'm going to use. Uh, it's a Honda branded brake fluid, but I do know that Honda makes a real high quality product and it's DOT3 so it does meet the specification the vehicle calls for. Um, you don't have to use you know factory fluid or even Honda fluid for that matter. Prestone and all those BG chemicals, or BG products, sorry, um, they all make a very similar high quality uh, fluid. Uh, brake fluid service interval, uh, I recommend to do it every two years time. Uh, brake fluid is hygroscopic. It does absorb moisture, which in turn can boil in the brake system during heavy or hard braking, which then causes steam to build up, which causes air and then ultimately brake failure. So um, it's really inexpensive to purchase brake fluid, especially when you buy the gigantic four or the one gallon jugs that I sometimes buy. Um, bottom line comes down to that a clean and dry brake system meaning that the brake fluid hasn't absorbed all the water from the atmosphere over time uh, results in less corrosion and longer brake system service life so that's pretty crucial in my my opinion so um, don't skimp on brake fluid uh, brakes uh, like brake and brake fluid like any other critical component in your vehicle uh, will make the difference between you having control and not having control in your vehicle so let's begin so I've just taken the liberty to fill the brake fluid reservoir full of brake fluid. In fact, it's actually almost filled right up to the top of the filler neck, uh, if you can sort of see that fluid level down there. Uh, and basically, uh, from this point on, we're going to start pumping the brakes. But uh, I wanted to mention a word of caution when handling brake fluid. You don't want to spill any of this stuff on any painted surface. And if you do, you need to wipe it up immediately and preferably rinse with water. Uh, brake fluid over time is highly corrosive uh, to paint. And what it does is that it will actually cause paint to dissolve on metal if left on long enough. So to begin the bleeding process, we basically just want to apply pressure to the brake pedal, firm brake pressure, about 10 times to basically rid the line sets of any old fluid and uh, and to push all that old fluid out of that caliper that we're currently working on. 
Um, I don't recommend people push this brake pedal more than 10 to 15 times on a full brake reservoir. And the reason why is um, you ultimately can uh, exhaust all the fluid out of the reservoir, introducing air into the system, which means that the bleeding process will be that much more difficult and that much longer and that much more work overall uh, because you put air into the system because it's not in just one caliper or one brake cylinder it's like everywhere so you have to do like a multi sort of repeat step bleeding process to uh, to clean up that mistake so I've done about oh, less than 15 foot presses there I'm gonna go and empty out that little container and refill the brake fluid reservoir at the same time so what I've done is I've essentially done a continued purge and drain of my little plastic cup container you saw earlier as well as done almost a three complete refill and sort of expel and refill process of the brake master cylinder fluid reservoir um, and of course all the fluid coming out of this line now uh, is the same color as the new fluid that I'm putting in so pretty much from this point on if you look inside my little hose here um, on the clear side uh, the fluid is nice and clean and there's no visible signs of any bubbles indicating that there's no air on this line and basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten this leader valve you know until it basically you can feel it contact the surface inside the bore of the valve and then you're just going to give it a little nudge further just to make sure it doesn't leak and essentially pull the hose off wipe the nipple dry of any brake fluid and essentially replace the little rubber cap um, that it came with. Uh, this rubber cap is pretty important. Uh, you need it uh, to keep dirt and sort of foreign objects and salt and all that gross stuff out from the road uh, out of that little nozzle. Um, occasionally sometimes when you try to bleed a brake system it's all plugged up and then you basically have to take remove it completely out of the bore clean it with a wire or just buy a new valve and then install it and sometimes if it's really bad if you don't do a brake bleed often enough and loosen this on a regular basis like say every two years like you're supposed to then what happens is that corrosion builds up around the threads to the point where you can't open this bleeder valve anymore and then it snaps off and then you'll have to replace this entire caliper assembly uh, which is not fun um, so there you have it you basically repeat the same thing for the driver side and then uh, I'm not going to walk you through that because it's essentially the same process uh, and then from there we'll move on to showing you how to bleed the rear brakes as well uh, which will also complete the segment on how to complete a brake flush. Other notes of caution that I like to mention throughout my videos is that you'll notice that I'm using a funnel to fill the brake master fluid reservoir uh, because of just the sheer size of this little tiny hole and the size of my bodily body and the angle that I'm trying to pour this fluid in I don't want to spill it everywhere so I've used my little handy funnel um, don't use funnels guys that are wet or dirty or have been used with engine oil unless you've cleaned all traces of engine oil off. Brake fluid, contrary to what I heard from some people, is not an oil. It's actually a synthetic fluid um, that, is, uh, that is specially derived to not boil and to sort of prevent corrosion when having your brake system as well as to protect all the rubber parts inside the brake lines. Um, whenever you introduce mineral oil, so i.e. engine oil or some type of grease into the system um, where it doesn't belong, it will basically cause the rubber seals to swell up and begin to leak which will then lead to either catastrophic or at the very least premature brake failure which uh, neither of which you want to deal with or experience especially when you're driving your vehicle on the road. Final step in the front brakes of course, like anything in common sense, is reinstall the front tires and check your tire pressures to make sure they're all in spec. So we're on to the rear side of the vehicle, or at least one of the rear sides, in this case is the rear passenger side brakes. Uh, on the back side they don't use disc brakes, they use drum brakes. Um, and how you bleed these are essentially the same as how the front brakes are done. Uh, basically you remove the little rubber cap above the brake line in the little bleeder nipple, attach it to the holes there, and instead of using a 10 millimeter wrench, we're going to use an 8 millimeter wrench to crack the line, the line bleeder open. And basically, you're going to follow the same steps. You're going to use your little fluid cup reservoir on the end of this bleeder, and you're basically just going to keep emptying it out, making sure that the whole time that that brake line is submerged in fluid inside that little cup. And essentially, just keep refilling the master cylinder and flushing until the fluid comes out nice and clean. When this is done, close the bleeder valve off. Reinstall the rear wheel, move on to the next side, 
and conversely you know move from each corner of the vehicle to the next making sure that the entire time that you don't see any air in those lines if you're just doing regular service on the brakes or um, that you uh, keep the master brake fluid reservoir full at all times so that you don't introduce air into the system and there you have it that is how you replace the front brake pads and rotors as well as conduct a full brake fluid flush on a 2007 Nissan Versa. Rate, comment, and subscribe. I try to publish as many car fixing videos as I humanly can in the time given. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.